my name is Scott Lagan. I teach foundation digital art and design at the Cleveland Institute of Art. This podcast is about editing images for an artist's portfolio and preparing the portfolio itself. The goal is to make your finished edited image resemble your original artwork as closely as possible. First, what kind of camera should I use? Can I use a cell phone camera? No, probably not. Small, inflexible lens, low resolution. You can get some cool looking images from cell phones, but probably not accurate images. Can I use a point and click camera with automatic settings? Yes, you can. Most cameras made in the last few years probably have sufficient resolution to make a good record of your image. In fact, if you're an artist that doesn't know much about photography, I suggest using automatic settings, getting the basic information, and then fine tuning the image in Photoshop. If you do have a good working knowledge of manual settings on your camera, then use those. You'll probably get better results. So how many megapixels should my camera have in order to record the image at sufficient resolution? There are other factors involved, but four megapixels is a good guideline for a bare minimum, and 10 megapixels is good. 10 megapixel cameras are relatively inexpensive these days. If you're doing a lot of documentation of your artwork, it might be worth the investment. There are other factors that affect your image as well. The camera lens is a factor. Better cameras tend to have better lenses. Analog to digital converters are also a big factor. It's what the camera uses to convert the analog information, the light and the image, into digital information. Different cameras have different A to D converters and that can make a big difference in what your image looks like. Many consumer cameras store their images as JPEGs. JPEGs use compression in order to maintain a small file size. JPEGs do this really efficiently, but if you resave a JPEG, it will compress the compression, and it's lossy compression, meaning every time that you compress, more data is lost, and it doesn't take many generations before the image looks blurry or uh, has weird artifacts and things that are undesirable. So never resave a JPEG. Never resave a JPEG. You can open them and look at them, that doesn't change the quality. If you were to open the JPEG, change something, and then resave it, then you'll lose quality. So the solution, as soon as you open a JPEG, before you make any changes and resave, save as Photoshop.psd format. Work on your image in Photoshop format, and then at the end, save a copy, save as a JPEG or anything else that you want. But while you're working on it, save it in Photoshop.psd format. Never resave a JPEG really. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's much better to do it right in the first place and get the most accurate results you can with your camera. But if you didn't do it right or the image was photographed under less than ideal conditions, here's a few things you can do. So now we're in Photoshop CS4. We're going to open an image and edit it and modify it so that it closely resembles the original artwork. We'll go to File, Open. We're going to look for the image. This is the one that we're looking for. We've located it, it's on the desktop. And this is the image. We click it and we open the image. And the image, we'll notice, is a JPEG and we don't want to resave a JPEG, right? We want to file, save as, before we do anything else. And we want to, instead of a JPEG, we want to title it first. I'll call it Laura Painting. Then we want to go, instead of a JPEG, Format Photoshop. Okay, then you'll see .psd, and you know you've done it right. You look where you're saving it. I'm going to go ahead and save it to the desktop again so we know where to find it easily for the podcast. File, save. So when we talk about resolution and megapixels for your camera, what are pixels exactly? I'm going to select the zoom tool in Photoshop, this little magnifying glass, and as long as the plus is selected, we can mag magnify and make things bigger. And if you go to any photographic image and you magnify it enough, you will notice that each image is made of tons and tons of little squares. And each square is only one value and one color and is mathematically precise. And if you have enough pixels per inch at the size that you're viewing it, then it appears to be a continuous photographic image. And when you don't have enough pixels per inch at the size that you're viewing it, that's when you start to see the little jagged edges where things don't look as clear as they can look. The image is on its side, so we're going to want to rotate it first. We'll go to Image, image rotation, and we're going to pick 90 degrees counterclockwise. It'll move it the opposite direction of a clock, and it's in the right direction. Now, what happens when the camera is not completely parallel to the image? We get some distortion, so the image is not completely rectangular. 
I'll show you something you can do to correct that and not lose part of your painting when you crop it. So we want to see our, our rulers. If you don't see them, you can go to View Rulers, and it's, if it's checked, that means you see your rulers, and of course you'll see them right here. Now, from your rulers, you can drag out, click, hold down, and drag Blue Guidelines. And we're going to try to visually center these blue guidelines between the point that sticks out the most and the point that sticks out the least. And we'll do this on all four sides, and this will be a guide to show us what straight is. So once we have the rule lines centered on all four sides, we're going to use the polygonal lasso tool to make a selection mask around our painting. Now, before you do this, you're going to want to go up to View, Snap, and make sure that Snap or Snap to is not selected because what happens with snap it'll try to line things up automatically with an edge and because the paintings edges are fairly close to the blue guidelines we've put down it will try to line up our painting selection with the blue lines and that won't help us at all so now we're going to go to the polygonal lasso whenever you have a, a tool in the tools panel that has a little uh, black arrow in the lower corner like this, then you're gonna have different selections and you can click and hold down to access all of the selections. And we're gonna pick polygonal lasso tool where you click on a point, then drag to another point and click there and you make a straight line between those points. Okay, so now we're ready to use the polygonal lasso and we wanna click on each corner of the painting, not on the blue lines. And when you're making a selection mask in Photoshop, you have to connect the end of your mask with the beginning and you see a little tiny little circle appear to let you know you're near the beginning and you can click and you've made a complete selection mask and you see the marching ants the little animated dashes here to let you know that you've made a successful selection okay so now we've made a selection around the edges of our painting which is not quite straight so the next thing we want to go to is edit transform distort and what Edit Transform Distort will allow us to do is to grab the corner here of, of each of these areas of the selection box and stretch the painting so that it lines up correctly with these blue lines. Now, once you've used Edit Transform to modify the painting so that it lines up and the edges are straight and lined up with the, uh, the blue guidelines, then you go up to the little check mark and you hit Check, and Photoshop will redraw the pixels of the image and go to Select, Deselect, so that there's no marching ants. So now we have a painting that's relatively straight and in good shape and we can use the crop tool, this tool right here, to crop line up with the edges of the painting and adjust them to make sure that you're including everything except no background. Once you're happy with your crop again, hit the check and you have a cropped painting. Now we'll make our, our guides disappear. View clear guides, they'll disappear, and I can look at the edges and that looks pretty good. Now we're ready to start working on the image adjustments. It's very helpful, if at all possible, to have your original artwork with you sitting right next to you while you're making alterations in Photoshop to see if you're making things more or less accurate as compared to your original artwork. If you don't see a panel that you want to have access to, go to Window and select whatever panel you'd like to select. So we're going to go to the Adjustments panel in CS4 and we're going to select Levels and you get this palette right here. This is a graph that shows you the range from darkest to lightest. The triangles underneath, this one represents represents the darkest values, the mid-range values, and the lightest values. There's not much information at all in the lightest part of the value range, and sure enough, you can see that the painting looks pretty washed out. The first thing I'm going to do is move this slider representing the highlight values to the edge of where the values start. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the black areas because there's a lot of black areas in here that are almost solid black and they're pretty washed out in here. And then I'm going to take the mid-range and I'm going to go back and forth. You can see if I go to the left a lot, it washes out and if I go too far to the right it fills in so we're gonna look for something where where this part here doesn't fill in totally but it looks pretty substantial by the way when you make an image adjustment that is non-destructive in this way you'll see a separate layer has been created in the layers palette things can be kept separate on separate layers in Photoshop so they can be manipulated separately so when we have created an image adjustment such as levels you get a levels adjustment layer in Photoshop and sure enough if I click on that little eyeball on the layers panel which you would access under window layers and you click on the little eyeball the little eye icon right next to it to make it invisible and you can see what your picture was before so before after before after. And it's good to make that comparison like that so you can see if you really did improve the picture 